Hello and welcome to a new series called Eastern Slope. This is part one. I'm George Call to introduce a technique we haven't used very much before. And that is um, something I learned in watercolor. You lay down a bunch of uh, darks and then you trace out some um, tree trunks and where the lights are going to be. So that was the main technique today. We almost covered the whole canvas with value color. So it's not too complicated, but the painting looks very complicated. And when I have these very complicated, like I'm in the jungle painting, I use this technique to get started, to lay down a bunch of darks and then trace out where all the shapes are going to be. So that's it for today. And, uh, don't get freaked out. I know this looks a little complicated, but when you do this technique, it really simplifies it. All right, so uh, get in there and um, let's have some fun. All right, here we go with part one. Thanks. Hello and welcome to part one of Eastern Slope. This is a three-part series and uh, I'm George Call again and uh, Looking forward to painting this with you. Of course, you you look at it and you go, my God, there's a lot going on here. How can we do this? I think what you'll find today is a good foundation to take the complication out of this. We're going to uh, put in some um, dark values and then we're going to kind of use a water uh, color technique to uh, remove some of the stain color to make limbs and rocks and things like that. All right, um, the important thing here is the foundation here of my colors. And I apologize for my palette being so, you know, dirty and all that kind of stuff. I have to clean it. But basically, I have ultra blue, uh, cobalt, alizarin, cad red, uh, yellow ochre. This is a cad yellow medium, Hansa yellow medium. This is like a lemon. Um, this is transparent oxide brown, uh, red, transparent oxide brown. I forgot to get my orange over there and that's why it's over here. I like to use a, a gray that's a, a Rembrandt cool gray. And over here, stuff left over from last week, these things on the side. So I think that's some sort of a purple or something. And some greens over here. My scraper and my palette knives. I like a really sharp one and a, kind of a mixing one. This one's a little bit more delicate than this one. And uh, my brushes. So here we go, a lot of rosemary brushes. I'll be telling you what those are as I paint. Of course, I have my uh, Gamsol odorless uh, mineral spirits here. And it's always nice to have a tube squeezer close by. And uh, I think I'm ready to go. All right, so let's mix up kind of an olive dark. So let's go blue, yellow ochre. Let's get some transparent oxide brown. You can see it's a very, very dark, subtle green there. And now I'm going to mix up just a blue and a yellow ochre. And now I'm going to mix in a uh, cad yellow medium to lighten it up. And a little bit of cad. Well, I guess this would be more of a lemon. You can see I got the dark green and a light green. I'm also going to mix up now just a blue and a cad and a transparent oxide brown. Alright, so I'm going to uh, start with a number 8 rosemary long flat 
Series 279. I've got a paper towel in one hand to kind of control the my brush. I'm going to add just a little bit of turp to my brush. Unstiffen it. And I'm going to go to the kind of medium color I have here. And start putting in some thinned it down here just a little bit and trying to try to figure out where all these darks are see the base of the trees would be down in here somewhere just a little bit more medium in here. Now I'm going to go to the lighter mixture. Oh sorry, lighter stuff. And that would be the upper canopy area of the painting. And now I noticed some really dark areas. So I went to the dark, which was the ultra blue and the transparent oxide brown. I see some stuff over here that's pretty dark. And the base of the trees are pretty dark. <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is Get some transparent oxide brown right here. Mix it into the all of the green thing I have. It kind of adds a, a reddish tinge to the to the mixture here. And I'm going to put that in. Yeah, need some blue in there. And I know there's waterfalls and things like that in there. We'll get those in just a minute. And just covering up the canvas so my white doesn't come through. I think I have some good darks right in here. And here. And I think I have some good darks over in this area here. Make sure to cover up the all parts of your canvas so you don't have these little white things peeking through. All right. I'm going to thin this down even more. And 
Just fill in a few areas that I think need to be filled in. And that is a good foundation. Whew, kind of, kind of like doing a watercolor. Not that I'm any expert with watercolor. In fact, I started in watercolor and uh, took a watercolor course at the Denver Students League and I had such a horrible instructor. 50% of the class dropped out and uh, I swore, I said, I'm a tough guy, I can handle this nasty person. It's just nasty. It just I know you need to be give critiques, but you don't have to attack people's personality. Not the right kind of personality to be an instructor, but I ended up saying I'm never going to paint watercolors again. But I saw the people going upstairs that were doing the, um, uh, oil painting, and they looked so happy. So um, unfortunately, it was such a negative experience. I didn't get back into painting for another 10 or 12 years. And I did drop out near the end of the semester. I said, this is crazy. This is nuts. So I started painting when I was 40 uh, in oils. I came back to painting when I was 47. All right. Keeping track of my time. I think we took about nine minutes to do this. And... Uh, I'm going to do a, first a few paper towel things where I see the lighter greens. You have to kind of keep changing your paper towel, see how I change it to a area that doesn't have so much pigment on it. thing is to choose an appropriate brush. And let me see if this brush does it. It's a uh, number six Rosemary Classic Long Flat. Right there. And I've dipped it into my Gamsol. And I'm going to see if... See, I have to keep dipping it in there. And I'm going to trace out where some of these trees are going to be. Let me see if a softer brush might do it even better. So let me go over to a number six Rosemary Long Flat Series 279. And the softer picks up a little bit more. And I'm working these basic shapes out. I think I need to take these even farther down. I think that's about right. You can always cover them up later if it's too far down. I met some of you at the um, Denver Arts the Students League show this last weekend. I had a great show. Sold lots of paintings. Some of you came up and introduced yourself and said, I'm one of your patrons that paints with you. And that was such a thrill. All right, this is going to take a little time. And this is the basic thing that you're going to be doing today is just laying out where these shapes are going to be. And then if you want to get a little bit smaller, see if we can go really small. Then the angle of your brush makes a big difference. This might be too small, but I'll try. 
Nope, that's not doing it too well. I'm going to move up one size. Let's try this number three rosemary long flat series 279. Boom. It's a little flared out. It may not be able to do the trick. No. I'm going back to the major guy. I'm going to go back to the number six. See, I just dip it in, flip it over. And there's a lot more trees down here that I need to work with. That might have been too thick. And let's get over into the water now. I think I need to reestablish some dark, so I'm going to go to blue, brown. And I need darks in here too. Gonna have to reestablish some of my trunks there. Okay, I see darks in here, here. Alrighty, let's get into the water. Oh, before I go to the water, let's not forget there are, there's a log jam that kind of goes from, that's the wrong brush. Too stiff. And we need to re-establish these many log jam guys right here and they're slightly angled. So you need to be working on log jam. Okay, I'm gonna do more log jam, probably off camera. More trees off camera also. So you know how to do it. Just don't get excited when I have more in here tomorrow. That's going to take, I think, about five minutes, ten minutes to do all that. So now let's figure out where the waterfall is going to be. So I know that about halfway up there's some water going around here. think right in here. Okay, here we go. And down here there's just some channels here. It's kind of hard to do with this brush. And now there's going to be two, two or three major falls, A, B, and C. So now we have to kind of show this area here. This is work. And then we have kind of a major deal here. So the important thing when you have a complicated painting like this, 
This is many times how I start, is I just get my darks and combination of darks, olives and whatever, and then I come back and I start removing areas that should be light. I'm going to get back and take a look at my shapes and see if I'm doing okay with that. And check my camera's recording. Everybody's recording properly. Good. One of my cameras, old blue, kind of crept out on me last time. So I'm kind of putting him off the side to have some recovery time. I think I've been working him too hard. And I put in my my red camera, which is behind me right now. All right. I think there's some lights coming through here. Some cutting through the. There's some. Oh, it looks like a upper log jam up in this area. Now down here we have another light area. And it's kind of in parallel where this area is here. So I just kind of, then we have another area down in here that Kind of show some rapids and the water flowing away down here, not quite as light. And it's parallel more with up in here, this area. So kind of look at where you know things aren't too wonky on you and you're getting everything in the right place. I think I have some lights coming through here too. And these almost come together right down in here. There's also a light area here. And it's not as light as this area here, but it's, I think it reflects some sky area. And that will be in this area here. right up to the log jam. I'm going to run that off over there. I don't know if I'll put the rocks in in front or not, but uh, the important thing is get your trees and rocks in the right place and we'll be really ready to go with this thing. So I have a little bit more time, so I'm going to just continue on with um, lightening up my areas that need to be lightened. And that's the major thing for today. Now, we can also paint over this, you know, and, and put some you know, just because we don't get every darn tree, we can also lay in trees with brushes, you know, like nice fine number ones or twos. And But see, right now it's just too wet to put all that stuff in. Come on. I didn't fill up my trip can enough. See if this does any good. Little guy says, one more technique if I can find the right brush. 
I think an old skiff uh, number 12, I think. It's real big. I can't even recall, but sometimes this real stiff brush can do these things too through the dark. Just added a little bit of turp to it. And I'm going to be using that also. The other thing you can do is use your power knife to scrape in some stuff. So anything that works, and there's one more tool that probably will work with for you also, if I can find it. It's just a rubber tip thing that uh, watercolors use also, and we can use. But you can just run that thing over the um, surface, and it scrapes away the paint also. Let me see if I can find it, and I don't think it's at my fingertips, so I will not do that right now. Oh, another thing that people use is Q-tips. But Q-tips are a little bit uh, wider, um, you know, if our, of the medicine cabinet. And sometimes these work pretty good too. Let's dip it. All right, so try these different techniques and you will really like the outcome. Now with this great big old brush, I'm going to soften my edges. This, I picked it up at the um, art store. It's a primer, bristle, creative mark. I'm trying to get rid of some of these edges that are just a little too stubby. and softening some edges. I like those brush marks on on that pine tree thing there. I'll leave that. All right, that's it for today. So spend some time uh, tracing out where the water is going to be and also uh, where the trunks are going to be. That's what I'll be doing between now and part two. Thank you so much for coming to visit me today, and happy painting. All right. Thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.